In this section, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. So before I actually explain what implicit differentiation is, I'm going to start this section with an example. I'm going to follow it up with another example and then show you how you would do implicit. This one you don't have to actually do implicit. We're going to do this one by traditional methods. Okay, so for this we want to find dy dx. What does that mean? We want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, which means that x should be your only variable in this problem. In this case, the way it's given to us, we have to do a little work with it first. We need to first solve for y, and then we can apply the derivative of both sides like we've done before in uh, previous sections. So there's a common factor of y, we're going to pull that out first, and that's going to leave us with x plus 1. So again, factoring out the, the common factor there on each one, there is a 1 here, don't forget about that one. And then, to solve for y, divide both sides by x plus 1, and we get it. We get 3 over x plus 1, that's going to be this equation solved for y. Then we're going to apply the derivative to both sides. Now before I do that, I'm going to first rewrite it this way, x plus 1 to negative 1. Could I have done this with quotient rule? Yeah, I could have used quotient rule if I wanted to, but instead you can also write it this way where you write it with negative power and you can apply the chain rule instead. Okay, so for chain rule, now we're getting into the derivative. You do the derivative of the outside and you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So we do the outside first, negative 1 comes down, you get negative 3, x plus 1, subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get negative 2, but don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside. There's a 1 in front of the x, so that derivative uh, results in a 1. If you rewrite it, then your final answer is going to be negative 3 over x plus 1 squared, and then that would be your final answer. So knowing that, what we just went through, let's take a look at another example. So in that last problem, what we did first was we solved for y, then we took the derivative of both sides like we've done in previous sections. We have a problem with this one, and the reason why is because if I attempt to solve for y, I'm not going to be able to get something for y that has only x as the variable that's in it. Remember, we have to, if we want to do dy dx, and do that on both sides, we have to make sure that x is the only variable that's in there. If I move the x cubed over to here, factor out a y and divide, I'm going to end up with a mixture of x's and y's. So I can't have that. So unfortunately, I can't do the same process I did for the previous problem. This is where we get into what's called implicit differentiation. What is it? Implicit differentiation allows you to find the derivative even if you don't know what the equation is for y, you can still do that. So this is a process that we're going to do. We're actually going to take the derivative of each term separately, and we're going to keep in mind the variable you have down below. This means that everything that has an x in it, we're going to do a normal derivative. So the variable on the bottom tells you that when you get to that specific variable, this could be a t, could be dy dt, and you might have a t cubed here. Then again, the same thing. If this variable down below matches the one that's here, you're going to do a normal derivative. So you're going to do power rule, the same that you've done before in previous sessions. So when we do the derivative, let's start out by doing that. The first term, the 3 comes down, subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get 2, so 3x squared. Okay, so that term's done. Now, this next one does not have an x in it, so this is where we're going to apply implicit differentiation. Now, it's going to look real similar to something that you've already done in a previous session. In a previous session, you should have already gone over chain rule. That's actually what we're going to apply here. Because we have an outside function, but we also have an inside function. In this case, the inside function is going to be the y. So if I want to do the derivative of this part, I'm first going to do the derivative of the outside, which is going to involve normal power rule. The 2 comes down and multiplies by negative 2. You get negative 4y, subtract 1, and then you're left with that, negative 4y. But you're going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is y. Now normally I would do the derivative of y with respect to x, but I don't know what that actual equation is. I don't have y equals something with x in it, so I can't solve it that way. So here's where you're going to apply the implicit differentiation. 
at this point, since we don't know what y is, we're going to put in dy dx. We know that this notation means that if I had some equation that had x in it, I could just do the derivative and get the answer. Since I don't, this is all I can do. For y, I'm just going to put dy dx because that would be the notation, the derivative of y. That's the derivative of the inside part, so my chain rule is complete. I did the outside part with power rule. I multiply it by the derivative of y. In this case, the notation for it is dy dx. Let's move on to the next term here. It's plus y. Okay, now if I want to just write the derivative of y, what is it? It's this, dy dx. So whenever you have a y that's by itself, automatically it's just going to turn into a dy dx. Again, I, I got to account for that derivative. I can't just ignore it and move on or just put plus y. I got to do the derivative of every single term all the way across here. That's why I'm leaving the answer as dy dx. Over here, we have a 4. Derivative of any constant is always going to be 0. So now we've done that. We've done the derivative of all four terms. Once you go through that first step, the next thing you're going to do is you need to isolate dy dx because that's what they're asking for. We've got to solve for it. So you're going to treat dy dx like a variable. So we're going to solve for it. So what we'll do is we'll leave the terms that have dy dx in it. We'll leave that on one side of the equation. Everything else we're going to move over. So the 3x squared, we're going to bring that across the equal sign. It's going to become negative, negative 3x squared. And then uh, when I do that, I can either put, it doesn't matter which side I write that on, I'll actually move it over to this side and I'll keep these guys negative. Negative 4y dy dx and then plus dy dx equals negative 3x squared. Again, could I have moved these two over? Yeah, I could have done that too. So it doesn't really matter uh, which side you bring that over to. The main thing is you want to leave all the dy dx's on one side of the equation. We're going to factor that out now since there's a common factor. So dy dx, we'll factor that out. You get negative 4y plus 1. And then this side is still the same. We need to solve for dy dx. We're going to divide both sides by the part that's inside the parentheses. And then when we do, we're going to get our final answer. Negative 3x squared. And then I can either write it as, as this, or if I want to write as 1 minus 4y, I could do that also. What I could also do is, if I multiply top and bottom by a negative, I could make the top part negative. This order would be switched, and I would have 4y minus 1. Another way you could write your answer, but again, uh, this is the, would be the actual derivative. So what we did was, we actually found the derivative of this, and we didn't know what y actually was. We didn't actually have to solve for y in terms of x in order to do that. That's what implicit differentiation allows you to do. So now, Let's go back to that first example we started this video out as, and we'll do that same process using implicit differentiation. Okay, so now we're going back to the problem that we began the video with. When I started this video out, we did it by isolating the y, taking derivative of both sides. But now that we've just talked about implicit differentiation, let's do it that way. So now if we do solve this one by implicit, that means we have to take the derivative of each term separately. Now, this first term, because we have two things that are multiplied together, that's considered a product. So because it's two separate things multiplied together, what do you use? Yes, you've got to use the product rule on this one. Let's do that. So product rule means you take the first thing times the derivative of the second. So I have the first thing, x, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of y, is dy dx. We talked about that before. Whenever you have a, a single variable, single y, and you want to do the derivative, it just turns into dy dx. Plus the second thing, which is y, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x is going to become 1. So it's the product rule. First times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus the second thing, y, derivative of the first, derivative of x is just going to be 1. That takes care of the first part, the product. Then we're going to uh, add the derivative of y. That's dy dx. So again, whenever y is by itself, turns it, turn it into dy dx. After the equal sign is going to be 0 again. Derivative of any constant is 0. We need to solve this one for dy dx. All right, so we're going to. Uh, Everything that has dy dx, we're going to leave it on one side of the equation. 
everything else we're going to bring over. So the y, I need to move that across the equal sign. So I have x dy dx plus dy dx is going to equal negative y. We need to solve this for dy dx, so we're going to factor out dy dx. When we factor that out, we're going to get x plus 1 equals negative y. And then we're going to divide both sides by x plus 1 and we get dy dx equals negative y over x plus 1. So you might be thinking, well that's not the same answer that we got when we did it the first time. Okay, let me show you how you can make that answer match the one we did in the first, the very first start of this video. Remember that we solved for y earlier? We solved this for y and uh, we factored out the y, divided it, and we got 3 over x plus 1. That was from the first video we talked about that. Let's suppose we put this into here in place of y. Let's see what happens when we do that. Okay, because this is a rare case where we actually do know what the y is, so we can plug it back in. Most problems, when it's implicit, you're not going to be able to do that because we, we couldn't actually solve for y, but in this case we can. So for this, we're going to have a negative here. The y will replace it with the equation. Now remember, this again is what, if you take this equation here and solve for y, that's where we got it from. Plug it back in, and you get this. And then what you're going to do is simplify it. So fraction over fraction, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal, and what do you get? You get negative 3 over x plus 1 squared, and that's exactly what we got in the first place when we solve for y and the derivative of both sides separately. Now, of course, it's probably easier if you can solve for y. It's better to do that and then take the derivative of both sides instead of going through all this work because this definitely is more work. But I just wanted to show you this with implicit to show you that, yes, it's really true. You do get exactly the same answer. If you knew what the y was, you could put it in and you could solve for it. Now, like I said, you're not going to do this last step here for most problems because you're not going to really know what the y actually is. So you don't have an equation to put back in. But in this case, we did get the same answer as we started with.